Taylor Swift. Height 1.78 m. Weight 69 kg. Taylor Allison Swift, born December 13, 1989, is an American singer-songwriter. She is known for narrative songs about her personal life, which has received widespread media coverage. Born and raised in Pennsylvania, Swift moved to Nashville, Tennessee, at the age of 14 to pursue a career in country music. She signed with label Big Machine Records and became the youngest artist ever signed by the Sony slash ATV Music Publishing House. Her 2006 self-titled debut album peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200 and spent the most weeks on the chart in the 2000s. The album's third single, Our Song, made her the youngest person to single-handedly write and perform a number one song on the Hot Country Songs chart. Swift's second album, Fearless, was released in 2008. Buoyed by the success of pop crossover singles Love Story and You Belong With Me, Fearless became the best-selling album of 2009 in the U.S. The album won four Grammy Awards, with Swift becoming the youngest album of the year winner. Swift was the sole writer of her 2010 album, Speak Now. It debuted at number one in the United States and the single Mean won two Grammy Awards. Her fourth album, Red, 2012, yielded the successful singles We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together and I Knew You Were Trouble. For her fifth album, the pop-focused 1989, 2014, she received three Grammys and became the first woman and fifth act overall to win Album of the Year twice. Its singles Shake It Off, Blank Space, and Bad Blood reached number one in the US, Australia, and Canada. Swift's sixth album, Reputation, 2017, and its lead single, Look What You Made Me Do, Top the UK and US charts. With Reputation, she became the first act to have four albums sell one million copies within one week in the US. Her upcoming seventh album, Lover, 2019, spawned two US top five singles, Me, and You Need to Calm Down. Swift is one of the best selling music artists of all time having sold more than 50 million albums including 31.4 million in the US and 150 million single downloads. As a songwriter, she has received awards from the Nashville Songwriters Association and the Songwriters Hall of Fame and was included in Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Songwriters of All Time in 2015. She is also the recipient of various other accolades such as 10 Grammys, 1 Emmy, 23 Billboard Music Awards, 23 American Music Awards, and 12 Country Music Association Awards. And she holds six Guinness World Records. She has appeared in Times 100 Most Influential People in the World three times, 2010, 2015, 2019, and Forbes List of Top Earning Women in Music, 2011-2015. She also ranked first in the Forbes Celebrity 100, 2016, and was the youngest to be featured in the magazine's listing of the 100 Most Powerful Women, 2015. Minus 1989 to 2003, early life Taylor Allison Swift was born on December 13, 1989, in Reading, Pennsylvania. Her father, Scott Kingsley Swift, was a stockbroker for Merrill Lynch, and her mother. Andrea Gardner Swift, Nathan Lai, was a homemaker who had worked as a mutual fund marketing executive. Swift was named after the singer songwriter James Taylor. She has a younger brother named Austin, who is an actor. Swift spent the early years of her life on a Christmas tree farm which her father purchased from one of his clients. She attended preschool and kindergarten at the Alvernia Montessori School, run by Franciscan nuns before transferring to the Windcroft School. The family then moved to a rented house in the suburban town of Wyomissing, Pennsylvania, where she attended Wyomissing Area Junior-Senior High School. At the age of nine, 
Swift became interested in musical theatre and performed in four Berks Youth Theatre Academy productions. She also traveled regularly to New York City for vocal and acting lessons. Swift later shifted her focus toward country music inspired by Shania Twain's songs, which made her want to just run around the block four times and daydream about everything. She spent her weekends performing at local festivals and events. After watching a documentary about Faith Hill, Swift felt sure that she needed to go to Nashville, Tennessee, to pursue a music career. At the age of 11, she traveled with her mother to visit Nashville record labels and submitted a demo tape of Dolly Parton and Dixie Chicks karaoke covers. However, she was rejected since everyone in that town wanted to do what I wanted to do. So, I kept thinking to myself, I need to figure out a way to be different. When Swift was about 12 years old, computer repairman and local musician Ronnie Creamer taught her how to play guitar and helped with her first efforts as a songwriter. Leading to her writing Lucky You. In 2003, Swift and her parents started working with New York based music manager Dan Dimtro. With his help, Swift modeled for Abercrombie and Fitch as part of their Rising Stars campaign, had an original song included on a Maybelline compilation CD and attended meetings with major record labels. After performing original songs at an RCA Records showcase, Swift was given an artist development deal and began making frequent trips to Nashville with her mother. To help Swift break into country music, her father transferred to the Nashville office of Merrill Lynch when she was 14, and the family relocated to a lakefront house in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Swift attended Hendersonville High School, but after two years transferred to the Aaron Academy, which through homeschooling could accommodate her touring schedule, and she graduated a year early. Minus 2004 to 2008, Career Beginnings and Taylor Swift In Nashville, Swift worked with experienced music row songwriters such as Troy Verges, Brett Beavers, Brett James, Mac McAnally, and the Warren Brothers. She eventually formed a lasting working relationship with Liz Rose. They began meeting for two-hour writing sessions every Tuesday afternoon after school. Rose thought that the sessions were some of the easiest I've ever done. Basically, I was just her editor. She'd write about what happened in school that day. She had such a clear vision of what she was trying to say. And she'd come in with the most incredible hooks. Swift was signed by the Sony slash ATV Tree Publishing House, but left RCA Records when she was 14. She later recalled, I genuinely felt that I was running out of time. I wanted to capture these years of my life on an album while they still represented what I was going through. Swift was at an industry showcase at Nashville's Bluebird Cafe in 2005 when she caught the attention of Scott Borchetta. A DreamWorks Records executive who was preparing to form his own independent record label, Big Machine Records. She had met Borchetta in 2004. Swift became one of the record label's first signings, and her father purchased a 3% stake in the fledgling company at an estimated cost of $120. She began working on her eponymous debut album shortly after signing the record deal and persuaded Big Machine to hire her demo producer Nathan Chapman, with whom she felt she had the right chemistry. Swift wrote three of the album's songs alone, and co-wrote the remaining eight with writers Rose, Robert Ellis Oral, Brian Marr, and Angelo Petroglia. Taylor Swift was released on October 24, 2006. John Karamanica of the New York Times described it as a small masterpiece of pop-minded country, both wide-eyed and cynical. Held together by Miss Swift's firm, pleading voice. Taylor Swift peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart in the United States and spent 157 weeks on the ranking. Marking the longest stay on the chart by any release in the country in the 2000s decade. As of August 2016 the album has sold over 7.75 million copies worldwide. 
Big Machine Records was still in its infancy during the June 2006 release of the lead single, Tim McGraw. And Swift and her mother helped stuff the CD singles into envelopes to send to radio. She spent much of 2006 promoting Taylor Swift with a radio tour, television appearances, and opening for Rascal Flats on select dates of their 2006 tour. Swift was hired to open for Rascal Flats after they fired their previous opening act, Eric Church, for playing longer than his allotted time. Church jokingly told Swift that she should give her first gold record as a thanks for him getting fired. She eventually did send him her first gold record, with a note that said thanks for playing too long and too loud on the Flats tour. I sincerely appreciate it. Taylor. Borchetta has said that record industry peers disliked his signing of a 16-year-old singer-songwriter at first. But that Swift tapped into a previously unknown market teenage girls who listened to country music. Following Tim McGraw, four more singles were released throughout 2007 and 2008, Teardrops on My Guitar, Our Song, Picture to Burn and Should Have Said No. All were highly successful on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart in the United States, with our song and Should Have Said No both reaching number one. For the former, Swift became the youngest person to single-handedly write and perform a number one song on the chart. Teardrops on My Guitar became a moderate commercial success. Reaching number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 Songs chart in the United States 46 Swift also released the holiday album Sounds of the Season. The Taylor Swift Holiday Collection in October 2007 and the EP Beautiful Eyes in July 2008. She promoted her debut album extensively as the opening act for other artists on their tours. Swift won accolades for Taylor Swift. She was one of the recipients of the Nashville Songwriters Association Songwriter Slash Artist of the Year in 2007, becoming the youngest person to be honored with the title. She also won the Country Music Association's Horizon Award for Best New Artist, the Academy of Country Music Award's Top New Female Vocalist, and the American Music Award's Favorite Country Female Artist Honor. She was also nominated for Best New Artist at the 2008 Grammy Awards. She opened for the Rascal Flats on their 2008 Summer and Fall Tour. In July of that year, Swift began a romance with Joe Jonas that ended three months later. Minus 2008 to 2010, Fearless and Acting Swift's second studio album, Fearless, was released on November 11, 2008. The lead single, Love Story, was released in September 2008. It peaked at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 in Australia. Four more singles were released throughout 2008 and 2009, White Horse, You Belong With Me, 15 and Fearless. You Belong With Me was the album's highest charting single on the Billboard Hot 100. Peaking at number 2. The album debuted at number 1 on the Billboard 200 and was the top selling album of 2009 in the United States. The album received promotion from Swift's first concert tour, The Fearless Tour, which grossed over $63 million. Taylor Swift, Journey to Fearless, a concert film was aired on television and later released on DVD and Blu-ray. Swift also performed as a supporting act for Keith Urban's Escape Together World Tour. In 2009, the music video for You Belong With Me was named MTV Video Music Award for Best Female Video. Her acceptance speech was interrupted by rapper Kanye West. The incident was the subject of controversy and frequent media attention resulting in many internet memes. James Montgomery of MTV argued that the incident and subsequent media attention turned Swift into a bona fide mainstream celebrity. Also that year, she won five American Music Awards, 
including Artist of the Year and Favorite Country Album. Billboard named her 2009's Artist of the Year. The album ranked number 99 on NPR's 2017 list of the 150 greatest albums made by women. At the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards, Fearless was named Album of the Year and Best Country Album, and White Horse was named Best Country Song and Best Female Country Vocal Performance. Swift was the youngest artist ever to win Album of the Year. During the ceremony, Swift sang You Belong With Me and Rhiannon with Stevie Nicks. Her vocal performance received negative reviews and a media backlash. John Karamanica of the New York Times found it refreshing to see someone so gifted make the occasional flub and described Swift as the most important new pop star of the past few years. Swift became the youngest ever artist to be named Entertainer of the Year by the Country Music Association. Fearless also won the association's Album of the Year award. Swift contributed backing vocals to John Mayer's Half of My Heart, a single featured on his fourth album, Battle Studies, 2009. She co-wrote and recorded Best Days of Your Life with Kelly Pickler, and co-wrote two songs for the Hannah Montana, the movie soundtrack Dash You'll Always Find Your Way Back Home and Crazier. Swift also provided vocals for Boys Like Girls 2 is Better Than 1. She contributed two songs to the Valentine's Day soundtrack, including Today Was a Fairytale, which became her first number one on the Canadian Hot 100 chart. While filming her cinematic debut Valentine's Day in October 2009, Swift began a romantic relationship with co star Taylor Lautner. But they broke up later that year. The romantic comedy, released the following year, saw her play the ditzy girlfriend of a high school jock. A role in which Los Angeles Times found serious comedic potential. In a scathing review, the critic for Variety deemed her entirely indirect, arguing that she needs to find a skilled director to tamp her down and channel her obviously abundant energy. Swift made her acting debut in a 2009 episode of CBS's CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, playing a rebellious teenager. The New York Times noted that the character allowed Swift to be a little bit naughty, and credibly so. Later that year, Swift both hosted and performed as the musical guest for an episode of Saturday Night Live. Entertainment Weekly described her as the season's best Saturday Night Live host so far, noting that she was always up for the challenge, seemed to be having fun, and helped the rest of the cast nail the punchlines. Minus 2010 to 2014, Speak Now and Red. In August 2010, Swift released Mine, the lead single from her third studio album, Speak Now. It entered the United States at number 3, making Swift the second female artist in the history of the Hot 100, after Mariah Carey, to debut multiple tracks in the top 5 in one year. The other was Today Was a Fairy Tale at number 2. Swift wrote the album alone and co-produced every track 93 Speak Now, released on October 25, 2010, was a commercial success, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 and becoming the 16th album to achieve opening week sales of 1 million copies. It became the fastest selling digital album by a female artist, with 278,000 downloads in a week. Earning Swift an entry in the 2010 Guinness World Records. She earned another Guinness World Record entry after she became the first woman to achieve 10 track debuts on the Billboard Hot 100.3 of the album singles, Mine, Back to December, and Mean, peaked in the top 10 in Canada. Later in 2010, she briefly dated actor Jake Gyllenhaal. Mean won Best Country Song and Best Country Solo Performance at the 54th Annual Grammy Awards. Swift performed the song during the ceremony. Claire Suddeth of Time felt she delivered her comeback on key and with a vengeance. 
Jamie Deer Wester of USA Today wrote that the criticism in 2010 seemed to have made her a better songwriter and live performer. Swift won various other awards for Speak Now, including Songwriter Slash Artist of the Year by the Nashville Songwriters Association, 2010 and 2011, Woman of the Year by Billboard, 2011, and Entertainer of the Year by the Academy of Country Music, 2011 and 2012, and the Country Music Association in 2011. At the American Music Awards of 2011, Swift won Artist of the Year and Favorite Country Album. Rolling Stone placed Speak Now at number 45 in its 2012 list of the 50 best female albums of all time, writing. She might get played on the country station, but she's one of the few genuine rock stars we've got these days, with a flawless ear for what makes a song click. The Speak Now World Tour ran from February 2011 to March 2012 and grossed over $123 million. In November 2011, Swift released her first live album, Speak Now World Tour, Live. The following month, she contributed two original songs to the Hunger Games soundtrack album, Safe and Sound, co-written and recorded with The Civil Wars and T-Bone Burnett, and Eyes Open. Safe and Sound won the Grammy Award for Best Song Written for Visual Media. Swift contributed vocals to rapper B.O.B's Both of Us, released in May 2012. From July to September 2012, Swift dated political heir Connor Kennedy. In August, Swift released We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, the lead single from her fourth studio album, Red. It became her first number one in the US and New Zealand and reached the top slot on iTunes Digital Song Sales Chart 50 minutes after its release. Earning the fastest selling single in digital history Guinness World Record. Swift released the album's second single, Begin Again, in October. It reached number seven on the Billboard Hot 100. Other singles released from the album include I Knew You Were Trouble, 22, Everything Has Changed, The Last Time, and Red. I Knew You Were Trouble was a major commercial success, peaking at number two in the United States. Red was released on October 22, 2012 incorporating new genres for Swift, such as Heartland Rock, Dubstep, and Dance Pop. The album was a critical and commercial success, and debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 1.21 million copies. This marked the highest opening sales in a decade in the United States, and made Swift the first female to have 2 million selling album openings. A record recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records. The Red Tour ran from March 2013 to June 2014 and grossed over $150 million, the tour broke China ticket sales record with all 18,000 tickets sold in 60 seconds. Red earned several accolades, including four nominations at the 56th Annual Grammy Awards. Its single I Knew You Were Trouble. One Best Female Video at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards. Swift was named Best Female Country Artist at the 2012 American Music Awards and Artist of the Year at the 2013 ceremony. She received the Nashville Songwriters Association Songwriter Slash Artist Award for the fifth and sixth consecutive years in 2012 and 2013, respectively. Swift was also honored by the association with a special Pinnacle Award, making her the second recipient of the accolade after Garth Brooks. During this time, she had a short-term relationship with British singer Harry Styles. In 2013, Swift co-wrote and co-produced Sweeter Than Fiction with Jack Antonoff for the One Chance soundtrack, and received a Best Original Song nomination at the 71st Golden Globe Awards. She provided guest vocals for Tim McGraw's song Highway Don't Care, featuring guitar work by Keith Urban. Swift performed as Tears Go By with the Rolling Stones in Chicago, Illinois as part of their 50 and Counting tour and stated that the band was a major influence on her career outlook.
She also joined Florida Georgia Line on stage during their set at the 2013 Country Radio Seminar to sing Cruise. Outside music, Swift voiced Audrey, a tree lover, in the animated film The Lorax, 2012, made a cameo in the sitcom New Girl, 2013, and had a supporting role in the film adaptation of The Giver, 2014. In March 2014, Swift relocated to New York City. Around this time, she was working on her fifth studio album, 1989, with writers Antonoff, Max Martin, Shellback, Imogen Heap, Ryan Tedder, and Ali Payami. She promoted the album through various campaigns, including inviting fans to secret album listening sessions, called the 1989 Secret Sessions. Credited as her first documented, official pop album, it marked a departure from her previous country albums. The album was released on October 27, 2014 to positive reviews. 1989 sold 1.28 million copies in the US during the first week of release and debuted atop the Billboard 200 this made Swift the first act to have three albums sell more than 1 million copies in their opening release week, for which she earned a Guinness World Record. As of June 2017, 1989 had sold over 10 million copies worldwide. The album's lead single, Shake It Off, was released in August 2014 and debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. The album also generated two additional number one singles Dash Blank Space and Bad Blood, featuring Kendrick Lamar, as well as the top 10 entries Style and Wildest Dreams, and other singles Out of the Woods and New Romantics. Shake It Off, Blank Space, and Bad Blood also topped the charts in Australia and Canada. After Blank Space reached number one in the US following Shake It Off, Swift became the first woman in the Hot 100's history to succeed herself at the top spot. The music video for the former briefly became the fastest video to reach 1 billion views on Vivo. The videos for Blank Space and Bad Blood won four accolades at the 2015 MTV Video Music Awards, with the latter winning for Video of the Year and Best Collaboration. Swift's headlining tour, the 1989 World Tour, running from May to December 2015, grossed over $250 million, and became one of the highest grossing tours of the decade. Swift was named Billboard's Woman of the Year in 2014, becoming the first artist to win the award twice. Also that year, she received the Dick Clark Award for Excellence at the American Music Awards. In 2015, Shake It Off was nominated for three Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year and Song of the Year and Swift won the Brit Award for International Female Solo Artist. Swift was one of eight artists to receive a 50th Anniversary Milestone Award at the 2015 Academy of Country Music Awards. In 2016, Swift won three Grammy Awards for 1989 Album of the Year, Best Pop Vocal Album, and Best Music Video for Bad Blood. She became the first woman, and fifth act overall, to win the first of these twice. Prior to 1989's release, Swift stressed the importance of albums to artists and fans. In November 2014, she removed her entire catalog from Spotify, arguing that the streaming company's ad supported, free service undermined the premium service, which provides higher royalties for songwriters. In a June 2015 open letter, Swift criticized Apple Music for not offering royalties to artists during the streaming service's free three-month trial period and stated that she would pull 1989 from the catalog. The following day, Apple announced that it would pay artists during the free trial period and Swift agreed to stream 1989 on the streaming service. Swift's intellectual property rights management and holding company. TAS Rights Management filed for 73 trademarks related to Swift and the 1989-era memes. 
she re-added her entire catalog plus 1989 to Spotify, Amazon Music, and Google Play and other digital streaming platforms in June 2017. In 2015, Swip performed I Saw Her Standing There and Shake It Off with Paul McCartney at the Saturday Night Live 40th Anniversary Special After Party. And joined Kenny Chesney to sing Big Star on the opening night of his big revival tour in Nashville. In March 2015, Swift started dating Scottish DJ and record producer Calvin Harris. By June 2015, the duo were ranked as the highest paid celebrity couple over the past year by Forbes with combined earnings of over $146 million. Before Swift and Harris announced the end of their relationship in June 2016, the two co-wrote his song This Is What You Came For, featuring Rihanna for which she was initially credited under the pseudonym Nils Schoberg. The same month Swift started dating English actor Tom Hiddleston, the relationship ended several months later. In August, Swift addressed her mother's cancer diagnosis, and encouraged others to get a medical checkup. In September 2016, Swift began dating British actor Joe Alwyn. In October, Little Big Town released Better Man for their seventh album, the Breaker, written solely by Swift. She had emailed them the song and offered it to them, having their harmonies in mind. The song earned Swift an award for Song of the Year at the 51st CMA Awards. Two months later, Swift and British singer Zayn Malik released a single together called I Don't Wanna Live Forever, for the soundtrack of the film Fifty Shades Darker, 2017. The song was Swift's first release through Republic Records, which would later be her record label for her seventh studio album, Lover, 2019. The song reached number one in Sweden and peaked at number two in the United States. At the 2017 MTV Video Music Awards, the duo won the award for Best Collaboration for the song's music video. Dash 2017, Present, Reputation and Lover in August 2017, Swift sued and prevailed in a civil trial against David Mueller, a former morning show personality for Denver's KYGO-FM. Four years earlier, Swift had informed Mueller's bosses that he had sexually assaulted her by groping her at an event. After being fired, Mueller accused Swift of lying and sued her for making him lose his job. Shortly after, Swift countersued for sexual assault. The jury rejected Mueller's claims and ruled in favor of Swift. Swift thereafter cleared her social media accounts and released Look What You Made Me Do as the lead single from her sixth album, Reputation, stylized as Reputation. The song topped the charts in Australia, Ireland, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Its music video gained over 43.2 million views during its first day on YouTube, breaking the site's record for the most viewed music video within 24 hours. In October, Swift released the album's second single, Ready For It, which charted at number 3 in Australia and at number 4 in the United States. Two promotional singles were released from Reputation, Gorgeous and Call It What You Want, the former later became the album's fifth single, however only being released as such in Europe. The album was released on November 10 and sold 1.216 million copies in the United States becoming 2017's top-selling album, pure sales only, in the country and 2 million copies worldwide during its first week. With this achievement, she became the first act to have four albums sell 1 million copies within one week in the U.S. The album topped the charts in several countries, including the US, the UK, Australia and Canada. Later that month, Swift performed, Ready For It, and Call It What You Want on Saturday Night Live. End Game, featuring Ed Sheeran and Future, followed in November as the third single, and peaked at number 18 in the US. Other singles from the album include New Year's Day and Delicate the former of which was released exclusively to country radio. In April 2018, 
Swift featured on Sugarland's Babe from their album Bigger. In support of Reputation, Swift embarked on Taylor Swift's Reputation Stadium Tour from May to November 2018. The tour broke multiple venue attendance and grossing records in the United States, earning $266.1 million and selling more than 2 million tickets. As a result, Swift broke her own record for the highest grossing domestic tour by a woman and surpassed the Rolling Stones' $245 million grossing a bigger bank tour, 2005 to 2007. Worldwide, the tour grossed $345.7 million, making it the second highest grossing concert tour of the year. At the American Music Awards of 2018, Swift won Tour of the Year for the tour. Artist of the Year, Favorite Pop Slash Rock Female Artist, and Favorite Pop Slash Rock Album for Reputation. With a total of 23 awards, she became the most awarded female winner in AMA history. A record previously held by Whitney Houston. Reputation was nominated for a Grammy Award in the Best Pop Vocal Album category. In July 2018, Swift was cast as Bombalurana in the movie adaptation of the musical Cats. In early November, Big Machine Records released a compilation album titled Reputation Stadium Tour Surprise Song Playlist for digital streaming on streaming platforms. The album is a playlist of songs performed as surprise songs at the Reputation Stadium Tour. Reputation was Swift's last album under her 12-year contract with Big Machine Records. In November 2018, Swift signed a new multi-album deal with Big Machine's distributor Universal Music Group. In the United States, her future releases will be promoted under the Republic Records imprint. Swift stated that the contract included provisions for her to maintain ownership of her master recordings. In addition, UMG agreed to, in the event that it sells portions of its stake in Spotify, distribute proceeds among its artists and make them non-recoupable. On December 31, Reputation Stadium Tour, a concert film based on the tour was released on Netflix. Swift's second release with Republic Records, May, served as the lead single from her upcoming seventh studio album titled Lover, featuring Brandon Yuri of Panic. At the Disco, on April 26, 2019. The song debuted at number 100 on the Billboard Hot 100, but jumped to number 2 in its second week, becoming the biggest single week jump in the Hot 100's history. The music video for me, broke Swift's personal record by amassing 65.2 million views within its first day of release. On June 14, she released the second single You Need to Calm Down, and on that same night, Swift gave a surprise performance at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, Manhattan. To commemorate Stonewall 50 World Pride NYC 2019 Artistry influence zone of Swift's earliest musical memories is listening to her maternal grandmother, Marjorie Finlay, sing in church. As a child, she enjoyed Disney film soundtracks, my parents noticed that, once I had run out of words, I would just make up my own. Swift has said she owes her confidence to her mother, who helped her prepare for class presentations as a child. She also attributes her fascination with writing and storytelling to her mother. Swift was drawn to the storytelling of country music, and was introduced to the genre by the great female country artists of the 90s Shania Twain, Faith Hill, and the Dixie Chicks. Twain, both as a songwriter and performer, was her biggest musical influence. Hill was Swift's childhood role model, everything she said, did, wore, I tried to copy it. She admired the Dixie Chicks' defiant attitude and their ability to play their own instruments. The band's Cowboy Take Me Away was the first song Swift learned to play on the guitar. Swift also explored the music of older country stars including Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, and Tammy Wynette. She believes Parton is an amazing example to every female songwriter out there. Alt-country artists such as Ryan Adams, Patty Griffin, and Laurie McKenna have inspired Swift. Swift lists Paul McCartney, 
The Rolling Stones, Bruce Springsteen, Emmy Lou Harris, Chris Christopherson, and Carly Simon as her career role models. They've taken chances, but they've also been the same artist for their entire careers. McCartney, both as a Beatle and a solo artist, makes Swift feel as if I've been let into his heart and his mind any musician could only dream of a legacy like that. She admires Springsteen for being so musically relevant after such a long period of time. She aspires to be like Harris as she grows older, it's not about fame for her, it's about music. Christopherson shines in songwriter he's just one of those people who has been in this business for years but you can tell it hasn't chewed him up and spat him out, Swift says. She admires Simon's songwriter and honesty she's known as an emotional person but a strong person. Swift has also been influenced by many artists outside the country genre. As a preteen, she enjoyed bubblegum pop acts including Hanson and Britney Spears, Swift has said she has unwavering devotion for Spears. In her high school years, Swift listened to rock bands such as Dashboard Confessional, Fall Out Boy, and Jimmy Eat World. She has also spoken fondly of singers and songwriters like Michelle Branch, Alanis Morissette, Ashley Simpson, Fief Dobson, Colby Calais, Beyonce, and Justin Timberlake. And the 1960s acts The Shirelles, Doris Troy, and The Beach Boys. Swift's fifth album, The Pop Focused 1989, was influenced by some of her favorite 1980s pop acts including Annie Lennox, Phil Collins, and Like a Prayer era Madonna. Discussing Madonna, Swift said one element of Madonna's career that really takes center stage is how many times she's reinvented herself. It's easier to stay in one look, one comfort zone, one musical style. It's inspiring to see someone whose only predictable quality is being unpredictable. Musical style Swift's music contains elements of pop, pop rock, and country. She had described herself as a country artist until the 2014 release of 1989, which she described as a sonically cohesive pop album. Rolling Stone wrote, Swift might get played on the country station, but she's one of the few genuine rock stars we've got these days. According to the New York Times. There isn't much in Miss Swift's music to indicate country a few banjo strums, a pair of cowboy boots worn on stage, a bedazzled guitar but there's something in her winsome. Vulnerable delivery that's unique to Nashville. The Guardian wrote that Swift cranks melodies out with the pitiless efficiency of a Scandinavian pop factory. Swift's vocals were described by Sophie Shillacy of The Hollywood Reporter as sweet, but soft. The Los Angeles Times identified Swift's defining vocal gesture in studio recordings as the line that slides down like a contented sigh or up like a raised eyebrow. Giving her beloved girl time hits their air of easy intimacy. Rolling Stone, in a Speak Now review, wrote, Swift's voice is unaffected enough to mask how masterful she has become as a singer. She lowers her voice for the payoff lines in the classic mode of a shy girl trying to talk tough. In another review of Speak Now, the Village Voice wrote that her phrasing was previously bland and muddled, but that's changed. She can still sound strained and thin, and often strays into a pitch that drives some people crazy. But she's learned how to make words sound like what they mean. The Hollywood Reporter wrote that her live vocals are fine, but they do not match those of her peers. In 2009, Ken Tucker of Entertainment Weekly described Swift's vocals as flat, thin, and sometimes as wobbly as a newborn cold. However, Swift has received praise for refusing to correct her pitch with auto-tune. In an interview with The New Yorker, Swift characterized herself primarily as a songwriter. I write songs, and my voice is just a way to get those lyrics across. A writer for the Tennessean conceded in 2010 that Swift is not the best technical singer, but described her as the best communicator that we've got. Swift's vocal presence is something that concerns her and she has put a lot of work into improving it. It was reported in 2010 that she continues to take vocal lessons. 
she has said that she only feels nervous performing if I'm not sure what the audience thinks of me, like at award shows. Songwriter Swift uses her life experiences as an inspiration in her work. In her songs, Swift often addresses the anonymous crushes of her high school years and celebrities. Swift frequently criticizes ex-boyfriends an aspect of her songwriter downplayed by the village voice, being told what songs mean is like having a really pushy professor. And it imperils a true appreciation of Swift's talent, which is not confessional, but dramatic. However, New York believes the media scrutiny over her decision to mine her personal life for music is sexist, inasmuch as it's not asked of her male peers. Swift said that not all her songs are factual and that they are sometimes based on observations. Aside from her liner note clues, Swift tries not to talk about song subjects specifically because these are real people. You try to give insight as to where you were coming from as a writer without completely throwing somebody under the bus. For a female to write about her feelings, and then be portrayed as some clingy, insane, desperate girlfriend in need of making you marry her and have kids with her. I think that's taking something that potentially should be celebrated a woman writing about her feelings in a confessional way that's taking it and turning it and twisting it into something that is. Frankly a little sexist. Swift in response to criticism of her songwriter. The Guardian has praised Swift for writing about teenage years with a kind of wistful, sepia-toned nostalgia over the course of her first two albums. New York has remarked that many singer-songwriters have made great records as teens, but none made great records so explicitly about their teens. The magazine has also compared her work to Brian Wilson. In Fearless, Swift featured fairy tale imagery and explored the disconnect between fairy tales and the reality of love. Her later albums address more adult relationships. In addition to romance and love, Swift songs have discussed parent child relationships, friendships, alienation, fame, and career ambitions. Swift frequently includes a tossed off phrase to suggest large and serious things that won't fit in the song, things that enhance or subvert the surface narrative. Rolling Stone describes Swift as a songwriter savant with an intuitive gift for verse chorus bridge architecture. According to the Village Voice, she uses third verse point of view reversals frequently. In terms of imagery, repetition is evident in Swift's songwriter. In The Guardian's words, she spends so much time kissing in the rain that it seems a miracle she hasn't developed trench food. Slant Magazine adds, to Swift's credit, she explores new lyrical motifs over the course of her fourth album. Although reviews of Swift's work are almost uniformly positive, The New Yorker has said she is generally portrayed more as a skilled technician than as a Delanesque visionary. Filmmaking Swift has collaborated with many different directors for her music videos. And over time she has become more involved as a filmmaker in regards to writing and directing. Swift has her own production house, Taylor Swift Productions Incorporated. To which the music video for me, has been credited. In 2010, she co directed the music video for Mine with Roman White. In 2011, she continued to collaborate with White on the music videos for Mean and Ours. Swift developed the concept and treatment of the former video. In an interview, White elaborated that Swift was keenly involved in writing the treatment, casting, and wardrobe. And she stayed for both the 15 hour shooting days even when she wasn't in the scenes. Swift wrote the concept of the R's music video and then brought on White to direct. Describing her vision of both videos as being storylines. From 2014 to 2018, Swift collaborated with director Joseph Kahn on eight music videos. They were split evenly between four from her album 1989 and four from her album Reputation. Khan has praised Swift's filmmaking abilities and her involvement in the craft. In 2016, he described one of their early collaborations positively, explaining that It was literally one of the first times I felt that someone actually spoke the language of filmmaking that I've been doing over the last 25 years.
during that same period. Swift worked with American Express for her Blank Space music video, which Khan directed, and released the interactive app Amex Unstaged, Taylor Swift Experience. Swift received starring and executive producer credit, and in 2015 won a Primetime Emmy Award in the Outstanding Interactive Program for the app. In 2018, Swift developed the concept and then wrote the treatment for the music video of the Sugarland song Babe, which she also co-wrote. She then co-starred in the video alongside the two members of Sugarland Jennifer Nettles and Christian Bush, and directed by Anthony Mandler. Nettles described it as cinematic and a period piece, while Bush referenced its Mad Men influences Nettles also said that, I have a feeling we'll see her directing at some point soon. Because she was really good at it. In 2019, Swift co-directed the music video for me, with Dave Meyer and You Need to Calm Down with Drew Kirsch. She also co-executive produced the latter with Todrick Hall. Public Image Swift's personal life is the subject of constant media attention. In 2013, Abercrombie and Fitch marketed a slogan t-shirt with a slut-shaming remark directed toward her. The New York Times asserted that her dating history has begun to stir what feels like the beginning of a backlash and questioned whether Swift was in the midst of a quarter-life crisis. Swift has said that she is unwilling to discuss her personal life in public as she believes that talking about it can be a career weakness. Rolling Stone remarks upon her polite manner. If this is Swift's game face, it must be tattooed on because it never drops. The magazine also takes note of her ease with glad handing. And the Hollywood Reporter credits her as the best people person since Bill Clinton. While presenting Swift an award for her humanitarian endeavors in 2012, Michelle Obama described her as a singer who has rocketed to the top of the music industry but still keeps her feet on the ground. Someone who has shattered every expectation of what a 22-year-old can accomplish. Swift considers Michelle Obama to be a role model. Swift is one of the most followed people on social media, and is known for her friendly interactions with her fans. She has delivered holiday gifts to fans by mail and in person, dubbed Swift Maze. She considers it her responsibility to be conscious of her influence on young fans, and has said that her fans are the longest and best relationship I have ever had. Often described by the media as America's sweetheart, Swift insists that I don't live by all these rigid, weird rules that make me feel all fenced in. I just like the way that I feel like, and that makes me feel very free. She refuses to take part in overly sexualized photo shoots although Bloomberg LP views her as a sex symbol. Swift was named an icon of American style by Vogue in 2011. In 2014, she topped People's Annual Best Dressed list. In 2015, she was named Woman of the Year at the L Style Awards and ranked first in Maxim's Hot 100 list. Swift has also appeared in various power listings. Due to her success and earnings, she was included in Time's annual list of the 100 most influential people in 2010, 2015, and 2019. From 2011 to 2015, she appeared in the top three of the Forbes top earning women in music with earnings of $45 million, $57 million, $55 million, $64 million, and $80 million, respectively. In 2015, she became the youngest woman ever to be included on Forbes' 100 Most Powerful Women list, ranked at number 64. In 2016, Swift topped Forbes' annual list of the 100 highest paid celebrities with $170 million a feat that entered the Guinness World Records and also ranked among the top 10 in 2011. 2013 and 2015. She was one of the finalists for Time Person of the Year in 2014, and was named so in 2017 as part of the Silence Breakers who spoke up about sexual assault. In June 2017, Forbes estimated Swift's net worth to be $280 million. 
The magazine later estimated it was $320 million in July 2018 and $360 million in June 2019. Other ventures Philanthropy Swift's philanthropic efforts have been recognized by the Do Something Awards and the Tennessee Disaster Services. She has also received the Big Help Award for her dedication to helping others and inspiring others through action and the Ripple of Hope Award because of her dedication to advocacy at such a young age, Taylor is just the kind of woman we want our daughters to be. In 2008, she donated $100.000 to the Red Cross to help the victims of the Iowa flood of 2008. Swift has performed in charity reliefs including Sydney's Sound Relief Concert. She also recorded a song for the Hope for Haiti Now album. In response to the May 2010 Tennessee floods, Swift donated $500,000 during a telethon hosted by WSMV. In 2011, Swift used a dress rehearsal of her Speak Now tour as a benefit concert for victims of recent tornadoes in the United States, raising more than $750,000. In 2012, Swift supported Architecture for Humanity's Restore the Shore MTV Telethon in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. In 2016, she made a $1 million donation to Louisiana flood relief efforts and donated to the Dolly Parton Fire Fund. In 2017, Swift made a donation to the Houston Food Bank after Hurricane Harvey. Swift is a supporter of the arts and donated $75,000 to Nashville's Hendersonville High School in 2010 to help refurbish the school auditorium. In 2012, she pledged $4 million to fund the building of a new education center at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville. Also in 2012, Swift partnered with textbook rental company Chegg to donate $60,000 to the music departments of six U.S. colleges. Swift also promotes children's literacy. In 2009, she donated $250,000 to various schools around the country for improvement of education. Her other endeavors to promote literacy include donating six. 000 scholastic books to Reading Public Library. Pennsylvania, 14,000 books to Nashville Public Library, Tennessee. 2,000 scholastic books to the Reading Hospital Child Health Center's Early Literacy Program, and 25,000 books to New York City schools in 2015. The same year, Swift donated all proceeds from the sale of the promotional single Welcome to New York, at the time $50,000, to the New York City Department of Education. In 2007, she launched a campaign to protect children from online predators, in partnership with the Tennessee Association of Chiefs of Police. In 2009, Swift recorded a Sound Matters public service announcement, PSA, to make listeners aware of the importance of listening responsibly to prevent hearing impairment. Swift has donated items for auction to several charities, including, the Elton John AIDS Foundation, the UNICEF TAP Project, MusiCares, and Feeding America. As a recipient of the Academy of Country Music's Entertainer of the Year in 2011, Swift donated $25,000 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Tennessee. In 2012, Swift participated in the Stand Up to Cancer Telethon, performing Ronan, a song she wrote in memory of a four-year-old boy who died of neuroblastoma. The song was made available for digital download with all proceeds donated to cancer-related charities. In 2014, she donated $100,000 to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, and $50.000 to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She made private visits to hospitals to meet with sick patients and to support them. Swift has encouraged young people to volunteer in their local communities as part of Global Youth Service Day. In 2018, she collaborated with 300 women in Hollywood to set up the Time's Up initiative to protect women from harassment and discrimination and donated $100,000 to its legal defense fund. In April 2018, 
Swift donated to the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network in support of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. On May 7, 2018, the day before her Reputation Stadium tour kicked off, Swift invited 2,000 foster and adopted children to address rehearsal at Glendale, Arizona. Later that year, Swift made a surprise appearance at a benefit concert in New York City raising money for LGBT equality. In April 2019, Swift donated $113,000 to the LGBT organization Tennessee Equality Project. In June 2019, Swift donated an undisclosed sum to the media advocacy organization GLOD in support of Pride Month. Politics During the 2008 presidential campaign, Swift promoted the Every Woman Counts campaign, aimed at engaging women in the political process. And was one of many country stars to record a PSA for the vote, for your, country campaign. She stated, I don't think it's my job to try and influence people which way they should vote. Following Barack Obama's inauguration, she told Rolling Stone that she supported the president, I've never seen this country so happy about a political decision in my entire time of being alive. I'm so glad this was my first election. In a 2012 interview, Swift remarked that in spite of keeping herself as educated and informed as possible, she does not discuss politics. Fearing that it might influence other people. Writing about media pressure on Swift to publicly take political stances. Politico called Swift studiously apolitical. Swift has spent time with the Kennedy family and has spoken of her admiration for Ethel Kennedy. Swift is also a feminist. She has spoken out against LGBT discrimination. Following the 2008 murder of Larry King, she recorded a Gulson PSA to combat hate crimes. On the first anniversary of King's death, Swift told Seventeen that her parents taught her never to judge others based on whom they love, what color their skin is, or their religion. The music video for Swift's anti-bullying song Mean deals in part with homophobia in high schools, the video was nominated for an MTV VMA Social Activism Award in 2011. The New York Times believes she is part of a new wave of young, and mostly straight, women who are providing the soundtrack for a generation of gay fans coming to terms with their identity in a time of turbulent and confusing cultural messages. Prior to the 2018 midterm elections, Swift endorsed candidates for public office for the first time, declaring her support for two Democratic candidates. Congressman Jim Cooper for re-election to the House of Representatives, and former Governor of Tennessee Phil Bredesen for election to the Senate. She spoke out against Bredesen's opponent, Republican Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, stating that her voting record appalled and terrified her. She expressed her desire for LGBT rights and gender and racial equality, and condemned systemic racism. Vote.org, mentioned in Swift's post, reported that 65,000 people registered to vote in the 24 hours following Swift's post. An unprecedented surge even accounting for usual registration increases as deadlines approach. During Swift's acceptance speech for Artist of the Year at the American Music Awards of 2018, she encouraged her fans to vote in the 2018 midterm elections. In June 2019, Swift published a letter addressed to Republican Senator Lamar Alexander. Urging his support of the Equality Act. Swift also created a petition on Change.org urging the Senate to support the act. Product endorsements While promoting her debut album, Swift appeared as the face of Verizon Wireless Mobile Music Campaign. In the Fearless Era, she launched a LEI sundress range at Walmart and designed American Greetings cards and Jack Specific dolls. She became a spokesperson for the National Hockey League's NHL, Nashville Predators, and Sony Cybershot digital cameras. In the Speak Now era, she released a special edition of her album through Target. Swift became a cover girl spokesmodel, and launched two Elizabeth Arden fragrances Wonderstruck and Wonderstruck Enchanted. While promoting her fourth album, Red, 
Swift offered exclusive album promotions through Target, Papa John's Pizza, and Walgreens. She became a spokesmodel for Diet Coke and Ked Sneakers, released her third Elizabeth Arden fragrance named Taylor by Taylor Swift, and continued her partnerships with Sony Electronics and American Greetings. Swift also partnered with the companies AirAsia and Cantasm during the Red Tour. These acted as the official airlines for the Australian and Asian legs, and Cornetto sponsored the Asian leg of the tour. While promoting 1989, Swift had tie-ins with Subway, Cads, Target, and Diet Coke. In 2014, Swift released her fourth fragrance, Incredible Things. In 2016, Swift signed a multi-year deal with AT&T, she later headlined DirecTV's Super Saturday Night, the night prior to the 2017 Super Bowl. While promoting Reputation, Swift released a series of behind-the-scenes videos showing the album recording process through DirecTV. In 2018, Swift released two commercials for AT&T. The same year, Swift partnered with Fujifilm on a special edition autographed Instax camera, which includes a selfie mode and double exposure. Awards and Achievements Main Article, List of Awards and Nominations Received by Taylor Swift Swift has received many awards and honors, including 10 Grammy Awards, 23 American Music Awards, Most Wins by a Female Artist, 23 Billboard Music Awards, Most Wins by a Female Artist. 12 Country Music Association Awards, 8 Academy of Country Music Awards 1 Brit Award, and 1 Emmy Award. As a songwriter, she has been honored by the Nashville Songwriters Association and the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and has been listed in Rolling Stone's 2015 list of the 100 greatest songwriters of all time. Swift has sold more than 50 million albums including 31.4 million in the US 150 million single downloads, and was one of the top five music artists with the highest worldwide digital sales. Swift Studio Albums Taylor Swift, Fearless, Speak Now, Red, and 1989 have all sold over 4 million copies in the US. She is the third best-selling digital singles artist in the U.S. with a total of 106.5 million equivalent units certified according to Recording Industry Association of America.